I have had this peg loom for so long that I even forgot what the name was. And I managed to go on YouTube and find a video that refreshed my memory on what I was supposed to do with this thing. So in the process of cleaning a workstation, as well as cleaning this big box of silk scraps, I was cutting them in squares and then remembered, wait, I could make something out of this. So this will be my attempt in sections to go on and remember what to do, and make something useful out of all these silk scraps. So hang on. Now I have done something very similar called hand knitting, which involved using five of these, I don't know if you call them pegs, look kind of like knitting needles, turn them around. And one of the first things I have already noticed is that the holes in these two things are substantially different. This is actually smaller. This is my peg loom. So I'm not sure what I want to do about that. So with the hand ones, which were a lot of fun, you could sit there and watch TV and do it. You can make these kind of nifty little scarves. Obviously no wider than a certain amount, although I suppose you could put them together. And at the end, you tie them off. So it's very similar to this bigger one. I don't know what possessed me to get this many dowels, but I suppose I could do just half size and that may work initially. So I know it actually gets done. My point is to use up all sorts of silk scraps I have, which means I'll need to be tying them together and kind of like the sari silk wraps that you can buy. So let me see what happens about the threading. I need to think about that for just a second. I solved the problem of the small dowel hole by using embroidery thread. It's thicker than the monofilament that I was thinking about. And what I'm doing, because I've got assorted colors of silk, is I'm using these assorted colors of um, the embroidery thread that I've got. And I'm looping them through, pulling them out about three feet and I learned from the hand tools that I have a total of six feet of this embroidery stuck in here. You can always cut it off, but you certainly can't lengthen it very easily. Now what I do for these first two colors is I then tie off the end in a double knot. And that's just to keep it, where's the knot? Somewhere down here, there it is. That's just to keep them together as I work because they're going to hang off the edge and I'm going to continue all the way down with the sorted colors until I have um, all 14 of these done. You'll notice too that I took out these extra pegs and that was just because I didn't want this project to turn into a I will finish it later project that never happens. So it's doable. Let me finish threading these and we'll go to the next step. I have finished threading all of these dowels. And as you can see, they're multicolored. Every two dowels right here, I've tied them together at the ends. Each string is uh, six feet long, which makes them three feet because I've looped them through. So I've taken this piece of silk. These are scraps, by the way. And the whole point of this exercise is to use up the scraps that I was getting ready to pitch in the garbage can because I've had them for a year and I haven't done anything with them. So I've tied this at the end and I'm going to try to do this by holding the camera. And basically you alternate every other dowel. And it's a lot easier to do with two hands and faster. There we go. Okay, so done this. Get to the end. I loop. I loop around the end. And I bring it. Back down. 
Let me pick this up. Okay, so I'm going to go through this just looping like so. You want to keep kind of an even tension. Push it down to where this is. Some of these dowels, by the way, if you purchase these somewhere, you will find the holes way down at the bottom. And this is a little bit higher than I'm used to. So I'm going to see how it works. I get down near the end and the same thing I'm going to this is awkward holding with my different hands in different directions go around pull it a little bit and I will continue coming down here now my piece is only so long and in a few minutes I'm going to tie another piece to it I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm using for a way to use up these scraps. I'm going to go back around right here at the end. Switch hands on my phone. I could have had my husband come in here and hold this for me. But he's in the studio. We're trying to clean up the Christmas mess from orders. All right, let me keep coming around here. I'm almost to the end. I'm gonna find another piece and I'm gonna tie them off and I'll show you in a minute. All right, I tied another piece onto it and I don't really care if these little pieces stick out. Again, this is going to be some sort of wall hanging. So I'm just going to start looping these all the way through I'm going to get down to the end and I'll show you what I do next. This is the part I had to remember and I'm going to loop around and set this long piece over here. And I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand. I basically I'm going to try this with one hand. What I did with these two was take this and lift it up. Oh, such a pain. Over and put it back in so that these pieces, tighten this, are starting to come onto the thread. And they're not on the peg. Let me go all the way down and then when you see it you'll understand it a little bit better. So as I move these pieces all the way down, even though this is loose at the beginning, all of these threads become part of the weaving process. Now the back side, we flip it, should be clean. Every time I lift a dowel to go over what I have woven up here, it starts new so I can continue. So about every three slides down here, I'm working on one now, I will stop and move these dowels over the string and the piece. It just pull it out. Okay, so far I've shown you how high I have come with this and the point is this keeps working its way all the way down your string so I'm gonna see with my husband holding the phone if I can show you about taking this section and shoving it down so I've made about four passes and over here I'm gonna show you what to do if my head doesn't get in the way I can hold one finger down here lift this peg totally out of the way but see the string keeps it in place. Let's pull this a little bit. And I'm going to be doing this all the way down. All the way down. So what happens is that is how one second. So you get the gist of it here. 
this is how it all stays in place. The other thing that I'm doing is these sections were from my serger, leftover pieces, and they're very convenient in that they're all kind of the same size. But when I have bigger pieces like this, then I just come in and clip here and silk will rip pretty easily. So I can get these sections when I want to add more to the length, original length, I just put two together. I tie them like a double knot. It's kind of like that. If I want to snip a little off here, I can. And I'll just come back and add this to the end of this. Do the exact same thing. And I'm going to continue down here, flipping these over. So, and it's much easier. Just put your finger here, flip it over. I'm going to hold this back, exaggerate it. He's trying to film it now. Flip it over. Again, pull each thread. Flip it over. I just pull the yellow. And... trying to get so on and so forth all the way down and don't don't worry about these seeming all loose down here uh, at the end we'll be tightening those up so the point is I continue this until this is as wide as I want it to go and then at the end I'm going to be tying these off and we'll be pulling these you see how this whole thing moves, clipping this off. So technically I'm going to have a fringe at either end. So you'll have to give me some time. This is an incentive to get it done. Otherwise it would sit there along with 50 other half finished projects. And I will give an update as I progress. Pegs over. Whoops, one more, missed that. And what I'm going to do now is just show you with someone else holding the camera how much faster it is to do it with two hands. It's pretty mindless when it comes to this exercise. It is possible to miss a peg and find yourself in unison with the last one you did. Just go back, fix it. Or if you don't fix it, it's no big deal. It really isn't going to end or do anything to damage your entire piece. So get down the end make it around and i'm keep going so again i'll make four or five passes i will move the peg over and continue until i want it the width i will um, enjoy so i'm going to get done with this and then as i get near the end i'll show you how i finish it off and come back to it so this is as far as i've gotten with this particular i guess you could call it a sample it's not terrifically long I don't know, maybe about 16 inches long. But my point is to make a wall hanging out of it. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that yet. But what I wanted to show you was how I finished them off. Now I'm back to filming with one hand. So what I want to do is take these pieces at the bottom. And they're really long. If I was going to make something a particular length, it's probably important to know that you have to double the length of whatever thread that you've got or yarn and add, for good measure, a lot more inches, maybe 12 to 18 inches. And that would have given me something longer. I could easily have gone down. Now, I also have moved these slightly down, going through all my scraps. You notice that I've tied, and I'll move in a little bit closer, These little pieces sticking up, you can always tuck them inside if you don't like them. Now, if I cut the bottom off here, what I'm going to do is take these two colors, which is, by the way, a handy reason for having done it. I'm going to tie them in a knot, and I'm going to tie each section as I go down in a knot just to secure the bottom because I'm not going to have these dangling down. I could have, 
And if I hadn't just cut this, well, I may still. All right, let me tie them off and I'll show you what I did. I've cut the bottom and I have tied each one of these into little knots, double knots, like you are tying a knot in a shoelace. And that will keep all of these from sliding down the rest of the way. Now it doesn't mean, and I'll give you an example here, that you cannot come in and show your background depending on what you want to do. I've done a lot of wall hangings over the years and a lot of times watching the string in here is kind of cool. It's an easy thing to do. You'll also notice that I pulled this down. I will double knot this at the top of each one. I'll bring these two together and tie them. I'll bring these two together and tie them, these two. And I've just got this piece hanging off. And that is, by the way, how I finished the row. I just went over, tied it here. And because I'm going to put these two together, it's easy enough to secure it. So that's my next thing. And because I slid this down, you can always leave. This whole piece would have slid back and forth real easy. So let me tie that. And I may tie it a little bit differently at the top. And I'll show you what I'll do to have some way to secure it. So this is what I'm doing. I am just cutting very ends. I'll tie these two together. I'm going to cut this and tie these two together. And when I get done with those all the way across to these, I'll show you my next step. So with the bottom secure and the top the same way, all I did here was tie a knot at the bottom and then again at the top. And by the way, make sure you leave more than I did because it was a real pain to tie it. And this becomes the way, and this is not a dowel, I didn't have one, just a something for my mini blind thing, but you could see that that's the way that I would be hanging my piece. So lots of different ways to do it. I decided just to leave this fringe here, but if I didn't want it, I could have used a crochet hook. I have some big needles here somewhere, which are more for tapestry. And I could easily have woven this back inside where you never would see it. The same for the top too. And you can always do these in sections. This is, I uh, just measured it, 11 inches wide by about 13 or 14 inches long. And you can always leave a little bit left over to hook them together and make a rug or something larger. Again, it's an easy way, not fast, but a good way to use up your scraps, uh, keep a little bit of the bohemian vibe to it, and you'll be just fine. I hope you've enjoyed this. And here is a final view of a hanging wall hanging. I didn't have a piece of dowel, so I'm just using something from a mini blind. And you can see how it's hanging. If we level it up just a little bit, you can see my husband is kindly offering to hold it for me. And you can see it's kind of cool. If it was really long, it would hang down between a door or something. And it's a nice piece of artwork. So hopefully if you've enjoyed this and put your own spin on it and enjoy using those scrap silks. Thank you.